Hello crafters, it's Kathy Erlinson with a video tutorial of how to make my pop-up sandcastle. This is my first video, so who knows how good or bad it's going to be. Stick with me, I'll do my best to help you at least figure out the pop-up. I've made this pop-up with the image, Cricut Image Castle number M42C4D, Cricut Design Space. I'm going to use a very simple mechanism. There are lots of other kinds. Some of them are actually simpler, but not necessarily easier. I find this mechanism I'm going to show you to be the easiest with which to be accurate in getting my, my heights and, and distances right. I've made a lot of videos this, or not videos, a lot of pop-ups this way, especially I've done animals from the Noah's Alphabet cartridge, and they're really fun to make pop-up. Once you get the hang of this, you can apply it to almost anything. I'm using a five and a half by five and a half card hinged at the top, <clears throat> and I've made my image of my castle 4.2 inches tall. Now this is a, a four piece image, four layers, and I want to make it a three layer pop up. And I've done a few adjustments in the cutting. Uh, in the original image there are three other tiny pieces with part one. I sliced those out. I just don't want to use them. And after cutting I um, have cut off the banner from the castle just because it's too flimsy. And from layer three, here we are, this is the front, one, two, three, four. From layer three, I actually cut off this partial tower. I don't need it. It, it works great in the two-dimensional image. For three-dimensional, it's just a, a pain. It's not worth dealing with. So I've cut it off and tried to make the crenellated tower look pretty much like the other one. I'm using this simple pop-up method, which I call a square tube for lack of a better word. Here's an example. This is a half inch by half inch. You'll determine the sides, the size of your sides by the size of your, your image and how high uh, it is in the card and how far you want it to be from the back of the card. Here's your base, here's your back. And so this is a half inch by half inch, but that's not the size I'm using with this card. I just wanted you to see it. I'm going to use um, one inch height and half inch depth for this one. This is going to be a three layer one, so each of those half inch depths all added together is going to make this stand out from the back of the card an inch and a half. So you want to be careful when you're measuring and deciding on your sizes that you add in the, the depth of your pop-ups uh, mechanisms so that when your pop-up is completed and you close your card, you haven't added so much depth that your pop-up sticks out. With any luck, this one's going to work out right. I think I've measured it right. Measure once, cut, measure twice, cut once. I think that's it. We'll see if I did it right. So to make this little pop-up tube mechanism, I decided what, what measurements I wanted. In this case, one inch by one half inch. And I scored a piece of cardstock at one inch and one half, one inch and one half, and then gave it another almost half inch for a tab with which to close it. So you, you make your scores, you fold your scores, and I'm using um, double-sided sticky tape on that last tab. Add my tape, and then I can close up my tube. You just fold it on one side and fold it on the other so it folds right over that flap stick it down good and then um, work your your tube crease it both directions rotate it and crease it rotate it and crease it so that your 
mechanism will work well when you're opening and closing your card. Now it looks like this one wasn't exactly perfect in its measurements, but this one is just a demo. I'm going to cut off that little extra bit. Shouldn't be enough to worry about. Then the width of your pop-up mechanisms is determined by where you're going to place them. Now since my castle has little windows, I want to place my mechanisms between those windows. So I cut these actually 5 8 inches wide so they'll fit between the windows. I'm going to have three layers so I need six of them. So after I made my little square tube, or rectangular in this case, I then cut pieces the width that I wanted them. So now I have six of those. You can use your double-sided sticky tape, and I usually use it just a little bit, but then use the white glue as well. So the tape sticks it down initially and holds it in place while the glue dries. Because you've got moving parts, it's really important to make sure it's going to stick there and stay there. And I find that works best with the white glue. But don't use too much either, or when you go to stick it down, your layers are going to stick together and then they won't pop up. So let's get started. I have four layers, but I only want three pop-ups. So I'm going to take number one and adhere it to number two. And as I say, I would have glued stuff, but just for brevity, I'm going to use sticky tape as much as I can. So there, I've adhered the front part, number one, to number two. Now I have three layers that are going to pop up. Here's how we do it. I'll take that first layer, flip it over, and I'll take two of my little pop-up mechanisms. In this case, I'm just going to use tape on them, but in doing one that I really want to work and last, I would use just a little bit of tape and put white glue on that. Now you can see I've taken the, the little tubular mechanism and I've flattened it down and I've in this case just put the sticky tape on one of the longer sides. When this is opened out into a tube, the bottom of the tube has to match the bottom of your image. So okay, I've um, made my tube, I've put the sticky on one side, I'm going to place my little mechanism in the right place so that the bottom of the mechanism matches the bottom of the image. Then I'll just flatten it out to stick it down. Actually, if I flatten it out this way, then I can see where the bottom is. I'll do the same thing over here. Flatten it out so I can see where the bottom is. Align it with the bottom of the castle piece and adhere it down. So now I've got my first pop-up mechanism finished. So you can see all the way through there. There it is. That's how it should look. It aligns with the bottom so that when you stand it up, ta-da, it stands up. Okay, so I've done it on that one. I'm going to do it to each of the others. I'll do this as quickly as possible so it doesn't become boring watching me tape. Once again, I'm aligning the bottom of the mechanism with the bottom of the image, and I'm being careful to put my pop-up between the little windows so it won't show through. Um, I, obviously, I'm using bunches of different colors here just so you can see more clearly what I'm doing and what's different. On my sandcastle card, I used cardstock that was printed with a sand image. And I made my little pop-up mechanisms of the same cardstock so that even if they did show a little, which they will, it, it wasn't as obvious. Okay, one more layer to get my mechanisms onto. Each time turning them over and putting the, the mechanism on the back of the image. I want this to line up even though that back image doesn't have um, windows. I want the pop-up images to be about in the same places. So it looks like that's about right. I'm going to do the same thing over here. It's a little less than a half an inch from the edge. Stick it on. Okay, 
Now, all three of my layers of my image have their little pop-up mechanisms on them. That one doesn't want to stand up. Don't know why. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to stand up now. So now I'm going to stick them together. Once again, turning everything over backward. Well, turning the first two over backward. I'm going to lay those mechanisms down flat and I'm going to put a little bit of sticky tape on each one on the long side again, not on the short sides. Just on the long sides. Or if they were square rather than rectangular, just on the back side, not the bottom. And certainly not on the top. Then, if I were doing this for a permanent thing for, for a nice card, I would add my little bit of white glue so that it will be nice and, and tight, but I also don't want to get so much that it ekes out the sides. So for now, I'm not gonna, gonna mess with the glue. All right, I'm going to, um, yeah, I shouldn't have done that one first. Doesn't matter, it's undoable. Anyway, so now I've got my mechanism, I've got my sticky tape on it. Once again, gotta line up the bottoms. So I'll flatten that so the bottoms are, are down. Actually, what's the better way to do that? Hmm, okay. Is that going to work? No. Oh, okay, so they have to go this way. So it sticks out from down below the front layer, but the bottom is going to match up with the bottom of the next layer. And I'll stick them on. So see, they're grad stair-stepped. But when I stand them up, haha, I had the glue on the back of that one, duh. So when I stand them up, you can see you've got the layers there. This one got bent. That's my fault for sticking it to the mat. Doesn't matter. It's going to work. So that's what it looks like. Now would be the time <laughs> to put the goo on the second layer. Fold it so it is down like that. Take the back layer, matching up the bottoms. Pressing them down. So when you look from the front, you see you've got stair step, stair step. Okay. And then when you open it up, there's your three layers. Now you still have the back one. Here's where the magic comes. I'm going to press that down. Looks like that from the front. Press it down. Put my sticky on the back tabs and now I'm also going to put my sticky on the bottom tabs and I really do need to use glue this time or it won't stay put for me to show you so get a little bit of the white glue I think I'll close that up just a little just the littlest bit so it won't squish out Okay, fingers crossed. So, did it again, didn't I? Stuck it to the mat. Tell you what, learn from my mistakes. It'll still work. Okay, so now, with it like this, this is the front. I'm going to take my card. I'm going to lay this front down so that this bottom mechanism matches the crease in your card and hold it there so it stays. I'm going to close the card and really stick it down. Turn it over and do it from the back. Really stick it down. I'm going to give it a few seconds for the, um, the glue to dry. Here's another tip. Do your front embellishment on your card before you insert your pop-up. Um, if you're going to put beads or gems or anything, don't. But any flat embellishment, especially if you wanted to put a mat and all of that, put that on first because your pop-up makes this real lumpy and hard to get a nice glued surface on the front after you've put in the pop-up. So, okay, here it comes. Do we have a magic? Do we have a pop-up? 
Ta da! Can you see it from the top there? Here's how it looks when you open the card and look at it. I'm going to take it and push it all the way open and flatten it that way once make, because then that's just making sure that my mechanisms are loose enough to work easily. So, doink, there's your pop-up. Couldn't be easier. I hope you have a lot of fun doing this. And apply it to other things. Anything that you have several layers, you can make it be a pop-up. I love pop-ups. I have so much fun with them. Thanks for asking me to do this. It was a real challenge. I hope you enjoy it. And if you make a pop-up, stick it on the Facebook site so we can all see it. Thanks. Bye.